Do you have a pre-built network that you need to set up OSPF routing between the routers? Then this tutorial is going to be for you. I'm going to be showing you just how to set up these routers to be able to do OSPF routing and communicate between this network. If you want to see the full video of me actually building this network and setting up everything, including the OSPF routing, I will have that video in the description, but if not, let's get started. So this network already has everything set up. I have the PCs, the switches, the routers, all have got their IP addresses and connections. So if I come into PC0 and I do 192.168.1.11, so I'm trying to ping the PC within the same network, it will work correctly because we're just communicating within this one little thing here. But if I try to communicate outside of that to say 2.12, I'm going to get these errors of destination host unreachable because I haven't taught the network how to communicate across the routers. So that's what we're going to do now. So to start off with, I'm going to open up router zero into CLI mode. I'm going to press enter and I'm going to enter into enable, to enable enter into conf T for configuration. And then I need to set up the OSPF. So I'm going to do router OSPF one. So now I'm in the configuration for this. Now I need to tell the router the pathways and that sort of thing. So I need to tell it that if you want to get to one, any of the ones in here, I need to tell it how. And you've got to do something interesting here. You basically give an inverted subnet mask. However, it's a bit more than just that. So like you basically, the inverted of a 192.168 is the 00025. And then similar for the 255.000. So here what I would do is I would do a network 192.168.1.0. And then the inverted subnet mask is 0.0.0.255. So you can think of this as we give the 192 the subnet mask reversed of the 10 and the 12. So then I also need to tell it area 0. Now I need to give it the 10 and the 12 network. So I can do network 10.0.0.0. The inverted subnet mask is 0.255.255.255 and then area zero. Now, if you're doing this on a different network, make sure that you've swapped this out for your IP addresses that you've set up. So I'm gonna press enter. And now I also need to set up 12, but I'm just gonna do the up arrow, go across and change it from 10 to 12 there to save me typing out the whole thing again. So now I'm going to press enter. I'm going to type exit, exit, write memory, exit. So now I've configured my router zero. And I'm going to come to router one and do the same process. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to type enable. I'm going to do conf t. And now I'm going to tell it router ospf one so i'm entering into that same configuration mode again and here i need to tell it its little subnet here which is two so i'm going to do network kind of out of screen there network 192.168.2.0 and then the inverted subnet mask here is 0.0.0.255 and then area zero now I need to tell it it's two outgoing router connections. So here that is 10 and 11. So I'm going to do network 10.0.0.0. Inverted subnet mask is 0 0.255.255.255. And then area 0. And now I'm going to press up arrow. I'm going to go across and change the 10 to be 11. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to type exit, exit, write memory. So now the OSPF is set in router one. And now I just need to repeat this process again in router two. So enable conf t and I do router OSPF one. So I need to tell it the subnet mask here, little the three. So network. 192.168.3.0 and then the inverted subnet mask is 0.0.0.255 and then I need to do area 0 and now I need to tell it 11 because it goes out 11 and then at 12. 
So I do network 11.0.0.0, inverted subnet mask is 0.255.255.255, area 0. And now I'm going to do the up arrow. Oops. Oh, it kicked me out. Round up OSPF1. Okay, now I'm going to do the up arrow again. I'm going to go across and I'm going to change this to 12. Press enter, exit, exit, write, and memory. So now I have router to configure. So everyone is happy, everyone is configured for the routing. So I'm gonna open up PC0 again. I'm gonna press up arrow and enter. Now this first command, like the first try, will fail because it's doing the ARP broadcast, but then we should see messages, and we are. So it is working successfully. And now let's try ping uh, 314. So let's do 314. Once again, the first one should fail and then it should work successfully. Yep, so it is working successfully. And just to note that if you do this again, all of them will work because you only have to do the ARP broadcast once. So let's see how that works in a simulation mode. So if I drag that there, I'm going to select from PC0 to PC4. So it should take the fastest, yeah, it did. So the fastest route is to go from 0 to 2 and ignore 1. So it knows how to get across the network happily and send the message successfully. Um, and just to note that like if you, a good thing here is so if we do to PC5, we're going to have issues on our first try because needs to do the ARP messaging. So this message will fail and you'll get all these like going all over the place sorts of messages and eventually it will say fail, right? But if you then go and you do this again, this one will work successfully because it's now done that ARP broadcast. It knows how to get across the network. It knows what way to go and you have no issues. Oops. So yeah. So that's how you can do uh, OSPF routing within Cisco Packet Tracer and how to test the connectivity. Now, if you did want to go and do this whole build, I do have that video in the description. But if not, if you've got any video suggestions or requests, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in my next video. Bye.